you don't have to learn to trade alone. Welcome to the Trading Lifestyle Podcast, where we interview professional currency traders and industry experts who can help you improve your trading and your life. And now, your host, Hugh Kimura. What's up, traders? This is Hugh. And in this episode, I had the pleasure of sitting down with Arif Ahmad, managing partner and co-founder of Scandinavian Capital Markets. And in this episode, I sit down with him and talk about what it was like to start a brokerage, why he chose Sweden as a place to start a brokerage, and we talk about the types of changes that he wants to see in the Forex world. So it was a lot of fun being able to go out to Stockholm to talk to these guys and hang out. And I hope that this episode gives you some insights into the world of Forex brokers. Before we get started, remember that trading is risky and you could lose all of your investment. This podcast is for educational purposes only and is not trading, tax, or investment advice of any kind. Past performance does not guarantee future results. All right. Hey, everybody. We're here with Arif from um, Scandinavian Capital Markets. Good to meet you, Arif. Good to meet you, too. <laughs> so uh, we're going to talk about how you started uh, SCM Forex, um, what you went through, and how you guys are different. So maybe you could start us off with uh, the Sure. Background. So <clears throat> I guess, um, you know, we really started as an asset, asset management company many, many years ago. Um, you know, we were developing strategies, you know, algorithms and different type of trading strategies. And um, essentially, you know, we onboarded with uh, a number of brokers, you know, good and bad. But, you know, typically, um, I guess, always ended up in a disappointment, to be honest. You know, uh, we got scammed by a lot of brokers. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, they booked us many, many times. And uh, that kind of... I guess led us to the uh, you know conclusion that you know we needed to start our own brokerage you know uh, to be able to you know meet the needs that we needed basically as an asset management company. Mm -hmm. So um, that basically led um, for us to you know really think seriously about you know starting a brokerage, and we we thought that you know at the time we thought that you know there is really no Swedish STP broker out there, mm -hmm. um, you know. The market's being dominated by a lot of, you know, shady characters. Unfortunately, a lot from Cyprus, Malta, you know, the Mediterranean regions. Mm -hmm. So we thought that, uh, hey, you know, this is a great way to leverage everything that, you know, Sweden and Scandinavia stands for. You know, what is Sweden known for? It's, it's always known for safety, security, um, you know, transparency, you know, no conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> our thought was that, you know, what we could basically do is incorporate a lot of these values into an FX broker, mm -hmm. you know. So, you know, with the neutrality principle, basically, that Sweden has is that, you know, it has no conflict of, 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 of interest, essentially. Mm -hmm. So um, that was really our, our thought. And, you know, we looked at a lot, a lot of other, you know, very famous Swedish companies such as Ikea, Volvo, um, that have... Um, you know, done phenomenally well in, in their specific industry. You know, uh, IKEA is known for very good quality f furnishing. Uh, Volvo is known for very, you know, safe cars. Mm. So what we thought was we wanted to incorporate a lot of those values into the FX space as well, you know. Um, so, you know, that's really where, where the idea started. So, you know, we started the brokerage 2017. Um, you know, we got great uh, response from a lot of people because this was the first Swedish, you know, Scandinavian SDP broker out there. So um, it's really been a great, great, uh, you know, time and adventure so far. You know, we've been receiving a lot of positive messages from people uh, that really like the concept. They like the, uh, you know, the, the Scandinavian setup, you know, with the Swedish banking mm -hmm. uh, and, and the Scandinavian banking. So. Um, that's really our, our story so far. You know, it's it's been you know a great ride, and and I think you know uh, it, it will hopefully continue. Yeah, that's awesome. So maybe you could talk a little bit more about uh, regulation here in Sweden, right? Because it's kind of a, from what I can see, is it's a pretty good happy medium between the U.S. where it's maybe overregulated and those other places you're talking about which are underregulated. So maybe you could right. talk about that. So the thing with Sweden is is that they don't actually draft FX specific laws in this country. So mm -hmm. um, you know countries such as the UK or the US for an example where I guess they have pretty strict laws pertaining to you know uh, FX as an asset class mm -hmm. uh, they don't actually do that in Sweden. So okay. um, you know the license that you have is essentially you know the uh, you have to adhere to their money laundering policies, AML, KYC. Mm -hmm. um, you know they do yearly background checks of the owners. 
Um, you have to do reporting to the FSA here in Sweden as well. But you know, as a, you know, related to specifically uh, forex, you know, regulation, there is none essentially. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess that's the only difference between you know Sweden and you know other jurisdictions such as the UK or or the mm -hmm. US, for an example. But the bottom line, I guess, is that if you're not super heav heavily regulated, you are regulated, but not super heavily regulated, then that cost does not get passed on to the customer. Right? Correct. Exactly. That, that's exactly right. So, you know, we don't have a very heavy regulatory burden. Mm -hmm. And for that, you know, reason, we are able to, I guess, you know, give better a better trading environment to our clients because mm -hmm. we're not we're not that heavily regulated, so to speak. You mm -hmm. know, um, so you're absolutely correct in that. You know, we can pass that along to our clients, mm -hmm. so to speak. Yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. Um, so you're talking a little bit about kind of the scammy stuff that went on. Maybe mm -hmm. we could talk about that a little bit. Uh, we were talking about this yesterday, but I think it's important for people to know about that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So what are the kind of, besides the shady brokers, what are kind of the other uh, practices that you see that you kind of want to get rid of? Um, well, I guess, you know, th this industry, as you know, has been, um, you know, um, heavily, you know, tainted by a lot of bad actors, bad mm -hmm. characters. And I think it's, it's really because... Um, you know, not to say anything bad about, the, you know, the online gaming community or the ga gambling community. Unfortunately, a lot of people from those spaces mm -hmm. basically came into the FX space um, and has unfortunately given it uh, a bad name. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. um, I think uh, to an extent, uh, the retail FX, um, you know, business as a whole, um, it's very easy to set up a business. You know, if you look at, you know, the cost of, you know, getting up and running, you know, you just need an MT4 white label, which, you know, doesn't cost you more than five to 10,000. Um, and, you know, so it's a very low entry barrier, so to speak, you know. Yeah. Um, and for that reason, I think that, you know, people have unfortunately, you know, come in from other spaces such as online gaming and, you know, gambling communities mm -hmm. uh, and really given it a bad name, to be honest. You know, mm -hmm. everything's, you know, looked at as a CPA. Um, you know, you don't really see the, the people as human beings. You see this, them as more as an, as an MT4 number, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this is really what we're trying to do differently, you know, in Sweden and Scandinavian Capital Markets with the Valhalla Initiative is that we're actually inviting people over to see us, you know, who mm -hmm. we are, to see the company, to see our offices. Mm -hmm. um, and <clears throat> we really got the idea from Volvo, if I'm, I'm quite frank with you. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you know about Volvo, but what they do is that whenever, you know, they have a customer or a client, they actually invite them over to their factories, mm -hmm. you know, to see how the components are made, how the car is made. They show, you know, the, the A to, to Z process in terms of how the car is made. And that's kind of the concept that we wanted to, you know, copy to Scandinavian capital markets as well, mm -hmm. you know, to actually show the clients who we are, who, who the owners are, who the leadership is how, you know, we, how, what our ethos is as a, as a company mm -hmm. uh, and really be very, very transparent about it. And again, going back to the Swedish culture and the Scandinavian transparency mm -hmm. is that these are the core values that we really want to project to, um, you know, to the clients. Mm -hmm. um, so, so really that's, that's what we're trying to do with the whole Valhalla concept. Okay, cool. Uh, maybe you could talk a little bit about uh, you and Michael and how you met. And all so that. that's an interesting story. So my partner, Michael, uh, as we were running, obviously, the asset management division mm -hmm. uh, many, many years ago, uh, he actually was a uh, trader uh, managing some of our funds. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, he, he was a phenomenal trader. You know, he had a great track record, um, you know, had, you know, you know, made a lot of money to our clients. And then, you know, obviously, um, we bonded and connected, you know, as, as um, you know, friends and obviously colleagues and, and you know, partners. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that's what we really started, you know, thinking about, obviously, that, you know, we're not really getting the, the fair trading environment that we're looking from from these brokers that we were onboarded with. Mm -hmm. uh, and he thought that he could do a lot better, you know, if we had our own setup, you know, that would really meet our needs and wants as an asset management company, mm -hmm. as, as traders, essentially. So that's where we thought that, you know, we're like, we have the setup, you know, we have the suite, you know, the infrastructure uh, with the banking and the license and everything. So we thought that, you know, hey, it's it's a great way to, you know, first of all, um, you know, create something, uh, a good trading environment for us, mm -hmm. but also to offer that to other asset managers and other traders out there who, lo who are looking for this, you mm -hmm. know. Um, so that's really where the conversation started. So, you know, that's where we're like, you know, hey, let's look at, you know, setting up our own brokerage, which will be sort of another 
uh, division of the company. Um, and, uh, you know, that's essentially how, how it started. So, mm -hmm. you know, Michael runs more the brokerage operations in terms of, you know, IT and infrastructure and technology. And I take care of more of the of the marketing side and, and the client relations side, mm -hmm. so to speak. You know? Okay, cool. So it's a great mix. You yeah, know? yeah. It's, it's, it's really now You guys get along out. very well. It's very well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, absolutely. I think there's a lot of, uh, you know, trust between us. Um, going back to before where, you know, we were scammed by other people or other partners, mm -hmm. etc., um, you know, now we are actually, we've actually bonded quite a lot and it's, it's a very strong and, and good relationship, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, you know, he has my back, um, you know, and I have, have his, you know, so it's, 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 it's been really terrific for, from the start. Okay, cool. That's awesome. Yeah. So there's one thing about brokers that I didn't know early on and maybe most people don't know because, um, I guess brokers will tend to slip profitable traders. Um, maybe you could talk about that a little bit or. Sure. So, I mean, slippage uh, to an extent um, is associated with obviously a lot of B book brokers, mm -hmm. um, you know, people who internalize the risk. Uh, however, um, slippage can occur, obviously, at, if you're trading larger ticket sizes as well. So, mm -hmm. typically, if you're trading, for an example, if, if you're trading a very large uh, order or very large ticket size, you know, let's say it's 100 lots or 200 lots or 300 lots. Mm -hmm. Typically, if you execute a 100 lot trade, the top of book is typically only 100 lots. Okay. okay? So that means that the top of book is the exact price that you're going to get when you click on that price, essentially. Mm -hmm. However, if you're trading, let's say, you know, 400 lots or 500 lots, what then happens is that you get the first 100 lots for that price. But the second and the third and the th uh, fourth layer, it's basically going to be an average of all the all the, the different layers, so mm -hmm. to speak. You know. Okay. Um, so for that reason, mm -hmm. it's not really a slippage. I guess it's more of an average price of all of the layers that that you mm -hmm. know you're executed at. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, so you know people call it slippage, and you know there obviously slippage exists. But also you know if you're trading large you know trade or orders and ticket orders, mm -hmm. then you know you won't be able to get that price for 500 lots or you know 600 lots or whatever because there's no depth of market you know, and, yeah. and the top of book is unfortunately you know uh, about 100 lots mm -hmm. uh, typically you know with with brokers. So mm -hmm. okay, cool. That's good to know. Yeah, my friend actually built a system where he would um, execute the orders like in little chunks so that he wouldn't run into that issue. Right, exactly. That yeah. that's what a lot of people do because, you know, obviously if you're going on with a, you know, a huge chunk, then obviously, you know, you're going to get the average price of all the different layers in mm -hmm. the market, you know. Whereas if you split them up, split them up and and you go in with increments, you know, mm -hmm. you're not you're not going to get as much slippage. So absolutely that that's a great technique that that your friend is obviously using. Okay, cool. Um so what do you guys think about, uh, this is a common thing that people look for, I guess, in brokers. What do you guys think about scalping and EAs? Um, so obviously as a, as a broker, you know, I'm, I'm very neutral. Yeah. Um, you know, our job is really to give you as a client and as a trader a good, you know, execution venue and a mm -hmm. fair trading environment. Um, so, you know, for us, you know, whatever strategy you use, you know, we don't really have an opinion about it as long as we try and make you successful, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. uh, because we're a strictly STP broker, we want our traders to win. We want to retain a long-term relationship to our clients so that, you know, we can retain them as a clients, mm -hmm. you know, somebody coming in with, uh, you know, $500 or, you know, a thousand dollars. And unfortunately, you know, um, you know, blowing that a account up is not going to make us money and not, obviously not going to make the client money. So for us, we try and support our traders as much as possible to give them the proper tools to be able to succeed, whether that's an EA or if, if that's scalping or, you know, if that's, you know, trend trading or breakout mm -hmm. trading or whatever. So our job as a broker is really to be able to give you a fair trading environment and, and the proper set of tools to be able to succeed. Because mm -hmm. obviously, if you are, you know, a client for many, many years, you know that makes us money but that makes you happy because you're a profitable trader yeah. as well you know yeah. so that's really our ethos uh, you know in, in our brokerage that we try and support our clients as much as possible regardless of which which strategy that they're actually using you know? okay cool 
Uh, what platforms do you use? MT4, obviously, but uh... Uh, correct. So uh, we uh, we have the MT4, which is obviously a, you know one of the most popular you know trading platforms out there. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a while. I mean, it's been out for 15 yeah. years. So yeah. you know they tried to get it on to MT5, but that hasn't really succeeded yeah. yet. Yeah. Uh, and then we are actually in the process of launching uh, you know our institutional platform called the Scandex platform, okay. uh, which is more really suitable for I would say you know institutional type traders, asset managers. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, family offices, fund of funds, et cetera, that are looking for a more institutionalized pr platform as opposed to, you know, the retail, uh, retail-esque, you know, MT4, so to mm -hmm. speak. Uh, so those are, that's, that's what we're working on currently. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I think when we launch it, you know, hopefully it's, it's going to, you know, resonate well with, with the traders. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, our, our goal with our brokerage is, is really not to be a one-trick pony, mm -hmm. uh, but to offer, you know, diversity to our, our you know clients to show that that, that you know we have other offerings as well mm -hmm. and ultimately you know going back really to give a good trading environment to our clients whether that's in an mt4 platform or it's in a more institutionalized platform such as the scandex mm -hmm. just out of curiosity what's the biggest difference between um well uh, I, I guess you know the institutional platform is that you know you can see market depth Mm -hmm. uh, for an example, there's charting on it, you know, uh, for asset managers, for an example, there's functionalities whereby, you know, you can do different risk allocations for different accounts. Okay. Uh, you know, it's a very automated process. You can set risk parameters on each account. Nice. Um, so there's a lot of, you know, more, I guess, uh, you know, uh, tools that are more geared towards asset managers mm -hmm. as opposed to, you know, more retail traders, so mm -hmm. to speak, you know. Uh, so we try and cater to both um, and, you know, again, you know, try and, and give them the tools that they that they need really to to be able to succeed, you mm -hmm. know. Okay, cool. That's awesome. So maybe you could talk That's a little, good. you talked about a little bit before, but uh, the Valhalla experience. How does... Right, right. So the Valhalla experience <laughs> is actually an interesting one. So um, if you know anything about Nordic mythology, for an example, um, Valhalla is actually the uh, the place where you know a lot of the slain warriors actually refurs, uh, resurfaced after they died in in the battlefield. Mm -hmm. So you know, um, and then basically went on to live an eternal life in in in, in heaven or paradise. Mm -hmm. So you know, in the same. Um, manner what we're trying to do here is that you know for traders that got burned or scammed or you know had very unpleasant experiences what we are trying to do basically here is to you know do the same thing you know for them to mm -hmm. basically give them a valhalla of fx mm -hmm. essentially where they can you know go on and and you know have a very good you know trading environment to be able to trade in you mm -hmm. know um, and what we're trying to do is, is, you know, something different, you know, um, you know, we're not the biggest broker in the world. We're not the smallest broker in the world, but I would say we're the most personable broker in the world, whereby mm -hmm. we actually invite clients over to our offices in Stockholm. We meet them, you know, we, we hear their stories, they hear our stories. Um, and, you know, again, going back to the Volvo, it's, it's total transparency, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's really what the Valhalla initiative is about is, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a movement that is is aiming to give an alternative, unfortunately, to, you know, uh, Cyprus or Malta or any of the other jurisdictions that unfortunately, for some reasons, have gotten a pretty bad name over the years, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so for that reason, we're really creating this eternal trading environment, you know, for all these slain warriors, these FX warriors, mm -hmm. to be able to come to Valhalla and finally get a good resting place to be able to, you know, have a very, very profitable trading environment and, and you know, place to trade from, you mm -hmm. know. Um, so, so that's really what the movement is about. And, uh, you know, so far it's, it's resonated very, very well, you know, from the articles that have been published and, you know, from the people that we've talked to. Uh, everyone says that, you know, it's really about time that somebody, you know, does this because mm -hmm. somebody, industry leaders have to do it. You know, the guy that got scammed or, you know, the guy that got burned, you know, he doesn't have a platform or voice to be able to spearhead a change in the, in the industry, you know, mm -hmm. whereas we as, you know, brokers and like-minded people such as yourself, Forex educators, um, you know, and traders and, and asset managers and people with a voice and that platform, we are able to do it, you know. So mm -hmm. what we're doing is, is uh, we're, you know, allying ourselves with like-minded people, good people in the industry such as yourself and other key influencers 
to be able to unite and basically give an alternative to these bad actors or these bad you know places you know in the FX space so to speak you mm -hmm. know um, and and so far it's been great you know we're getting tons of positive messages from people and and people are really excited about you know where this change is, is going to lead us you know mm -hmm. so um, it's, it's been great and, and I'm, I'm certainly very very excited to you know move forward with, with, with this uh, cool yeah we definitely need some change in the uh, FX space. oh 100 percent 100 percent so what are, you, what are your thoughts on uh, crypto? I know we were talking about this last night, but uh, right. I just want to hear your thoughts. So crypto is interesting. Obviously, a lot of, um, you know, uh, back in 2017 or 2018, when, the, when you obviously had the huge bull run in crypto, you know, a lot of people said that, you know, or and there were a lot of FX guys that went over to crypto, mm -hmm. um, you know, and everyone's like, you know, FX is dead. Everyone's hopping over to crypto. But now you actually see that a lot of the because of the crypto winter, quote unquote, mm -hmm. a lot of guys are coming back to FX, you know. But what's also very interesting is that a lot of people that discovered crypto uh, are actually discovering FX now, mm, you okay. know, because, yeah. you know, they are applying the same technical analysis and, and, and stuff that they used on crypto. And now they're actually discovering other asset classes, you know, such as FX, you mm. know. Uh, to be able to trade because they like the volatility, volatility, you know. Yeah. Um, so it's it's really interesting that you know um, from crypto you actually had guys that discovered FX, you know, and vice versa. So mm -hmm. it's it's really a you know sort of a great uh, synergy, so to speak. Yeah, um, yeah for sure. You know, so uh, uh, I think FX is not going anywhere uh, as long as we have fiat currencies, mm -hmm. uh, and I think um, obviously blockchain is is here to stay as well. Whether it's uh, you know Bitcoin that's going to be the gold standard or not, I don't I don't really know. Um, you know, um, there might be another blockchain or another coin that's going to be you know the the most predominant one. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I certainly you know think it's a great asset class. I mean, there's a lot of very interesting applications within the blockchain that can help you know mm -hmm. societies. Um, so I'm very very for the blockchain system. And and again, you know, I don't really know. You know if there's going to be another bull run or not in, in bitcoin but mm -hmm. i'm very excited about you know what's happening and what specifically within the blockchain community mm -hmm. okay cool yeah that kind of mirrors my own my own uh, opinion of it so right it's good to hear yeah yeah cool. okay so i think that's about it is is there anything else that you wanted to uh talk about or um yeah well i guess um it would be interesting to hear from your perspective obviously you know you've been around for many many years you know you've you know seen a lot you've spoken to a lot of people uh, i guess what what's your sort of um you know uh, report on the industry uh, so to speak right now and where do you see the industry going you know in the next couple of months and a couple of years so to speak um yeah, that's a good question i well like like you talked about the industry i think has cleaned up quite a bit uh, before it was like the Wild West, right? And now you're into more reputable brokers, consolidations of brokers. Um, but I think, well, in the next couple of months, I don't think there's going to be big changes, but I think that the biggest changes later on are going to be how trading is taught. And um, like I'm trying out for this hedge fund and they're using bio data to uh, record your data when you trade. So I think that's kind of where the future is going to go. In terms of trader performance, human performance, and um, actually trying to quantify what a, tr a good trade looks like for somebody, uh, so I, I'm really excited about that kind of thing. Right, and, right, um, and yeah, cleaning up the brokerage space and all that. But yeah, that's uh, that's where I see it right now. Right, right, absolutely. I, I think you know, um, I think there's definitely going to be a lot of changes moving forward. Uh, obviously, with regulation becoming even you know harder mm -hmm. and and more strict. You know, with MiFID two and ESMA, um, you know, you have seen a lot of brokers that have dropped a lot in in volume. Uh, and to a certain extent, I think it's it, you know too much regulation is never good. But I think you know some happy medium is always good because that sort of keeps keeps the bad actors away so to speak yeah, you know yeah, for sure. um so you know I'm, I, I certainly agree with you and and I, I think really what we need to do is really change the culture of forex i think mm. that's really what's important you know yeah. what is the culture of forex you know um and and that's really what we're trying to you know do mm -hmm. at scandinavian capital markets is really spearhead a change you know we have a conference 
on May 7th uh, in London, mm -hmm. uh, where we're, you know, uh, inviting uh, industry leaders within the space, you know, hedge funds and, you know, family offices and professional traders. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, that's going to sort of be an alternative as opposed to, you know, the IF Expo or, you know, the London conference, you know, with the, with the Finance Magnets show. Mm -hmm. um, but this is sort of you know, going to be a bit more of a, I guess, like an institutional type conference, um, you know, so um, I definitely think that, you know, hopefully, you know, with the steps that we're doing with this initiative and the conference and, and many other, you know, allying ourselves with key minded, you know, like minded people, uh, ultimately, that's really what's going to spearhead the change, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, you can't, I can't do it myself, you can't do yeah. it yourself. Uh, but, you know, if we all unite, you know, mm -hmm. there might be a, 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 a scenario where we can spark a change, so to speak, you know, mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, I'm, I'm really happy about and proud about the initiative that we're doing. Of course, we want to grow as a broker as well. We want to grow as a company, but it's much more fun when you have a cause as well that you're, you, you yeah. know, that, that you're burning for, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. So maybe I should have asked this question in the beginning, but uh, uh, Dealing Desk, B book versus SDP. What mm -hmm. are the uh, what are the benefits of SDP? Or well, first the, explain what it is. Right. So well, with SDP is mm -hmm. obviously you know it's the straight through processing. So mm -hmm. which means that you know when you trade, we basically facilitate that trade to the uh, interbank market or to our liquidity providers essentially. Mm -hmm. um, so we have you know uh, liquidity pools of banks and non banks. Uh, that we basically execute your trades and we essentially make our money only on the spread and the commissions essentially mm -hmm. um, You know, which is the best because that means that you're trading directly with the banks as opposed to a broker Who's taking the other side of your trade? Mm -hmm. So if a broker is be booking you and taking the other side of your trade He's actually betting on that you lose your account or you, you lose your trade because that's money in their pocket mm -hmm. so if you put a trade a, a trade on your dollar and you lose 500 bucks, that's actually 500 bucks that goes in the, into the broker's pocket. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you, you know, win, you know, that's actually $500 that comes out of the broker's pocket, you know, mm -hmm. the B-book broker's pocket, you know. Um, you know, so the, the risk with that is that there's a conflict of interest, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, uh, you know they, there have been tendencies before uh, and still, you know, to an extent where, you know, they can... Um, manipulate your spreads, they can widen your spreads, they give you a lot of slippage, freeze outs, you know, all sorts of, you know, funky stuff mm -hmm. that, you know, is, is really a, a theft, you know, if yeah. you call it. It's a front running too, right? Yeah, it's, like it's legal yeah. robbery. I mean, yeah. that's what it is, um, you know. And so for that reason, you know, they're actually betting on you losing your money. And that's why, you know, that you've been accustomed to very high leverage. You know, the brokers be giving 500 to one leverage <laughs> yeah. to a lot of very inexperienced, you know, new traders because they know, frankly, you know, statistically, you know, a lot of new, new traders, unfortunately, you know, lose their accounts, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so, so I think that's really the risk with going with the, um, you know, uh, dealing desk is that, you know, they don't really have your best interest at hand. Whereas with an STP broker, we're just facilitating your trades directly to the market, you know, mm -hmm. and we're making, you know, uh, money on the commissions, you know. Um, so, you know, um, it may be not be the cheapest, but at least you have a peace of mind that, you know, you're, you're not being screwed around with, you know, mm -hmm. I had some clients coming up to me and saying, Hey, you know what, you know, I'm getting, a, you know, zero pip spreads that, you know, with this, uh, this and this broker. And I'm like, dude, you know, they're actually, they're not making money on the spread. They're making money on you losing yeah. your account, you yeah. know, and that's how they make money. Mm -hmm. Whereas with us, we have to charge a commission in order to, you know, make revenue. But at least you have the peace of mind that, you know, no one's going to screw around with your account, mm -hmm. you know. So that's really the, I would say, the difference. And, and obviously, you know, as a trader, you know, uh, you should go with, with the STP version than the agency model version, mm -hmm. you know, any time of day, because at least you can trade in, in an environment where you know that the broker doesn't, you know, there's no conflict of interest, so to mm -hmm. speak, you know. Yeah. Any other I mean, questions, guys? I got those questions. Okay. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when you think about the future of trading uh -huh. and specific Forex trading and even cryptocurrency trading, what has to change? Um, what's not working culturally? Uh, culturally, I think, well, like you're talking about, there's that whole kind of gambling mentality, right? I think that's the biggest thing that needs to 
be uh, kind of extracted from from trading. It's not gambling. It's it's a job. You have to um, exercise discipline. And um, yeah, if, if if you got rid of that, I think you would get rid of some of these dicey brokers. You would get rid of some of these educators who are just trying to sell you a system that, that doesn't necessarily work for you. Uh, stuff like that. So I think that's the biggest thing. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I really think it's the culture that mm -hmm. needs to uh, change, you know, yeah. uh, taking away the gambling mentality uh, of it and, you know, really making it more mainstream, uh, mm -hmm. you know, a more serious asset class, you know. Yeah. Uh, like like treating it like a, any other profession, like correct, a, like a yeah. job, like a doctor or a lawyer. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. E exactly. Exactly. So. And unfortunately, yeah, I think, you know, to an extent, it's it's really being um you know become it's really become like that because of a lot of i guess online gambling people mm -hmm. you know have come into the industry and yeah. you know just like it's been morphed so to speak you know yeah yeah, yeah. um and, and which is really unfortunately you know yeah and, and i guess it's the marketing also right like you got right. lewis hamilton saying oh, open a demo account with one million dollars right and nothing against lewis hamilton but just right. that type of marketing kind of attracts you know those type of the gambling type of crowd. correct correct yeah. exactly exactly yeah. you know everything's looked at a cpa you know everyone's just an mt4 account you know everything's yeah. done through screens you know so there's no really human interaction or human emotion involved you know yeah, yeah. uh and, and that's really you know unfortunate i would say yeah um, for sure you know and that's really where people become greedy mm -hmm. unfortunately and and you know, try and screw you around and because they don't know who the other person is behind the screen. Yeah. And for yeah. that reason, they don't know his story. They don't know how long it took him to, you know, make up these savings or, you know, earn these savings, you know, and, and yeah. you know, that's, that's really, you know, un unfortunate. And uh, I think, you know, people, good minded people such as yourself and other good edu good quality ed ed educators, you know, really, we need to unite mm -hmm. uh, in a cause to change the culture of Forex to, be, make it more serious, you know, make mm -hmm. it more professional, you know, yeah. um, you know, from this gambling type, you know, industry, unfortunately, that that it's been turned into the yeah. past couple of years, you know, yeah, yeah, true. and just a question for both of you about that. Is that a risky business? I mean, are we messing with bad actors that are actually truly dangerous? Or is it not a risky business? And it will happen? Like, can this culture change happen? Number one? And if it does, is it a risky business to be the forerunners of it? Um, I wouldn't say it's, it's, uh, I mean, you know, uh, I think, it, you know, I, I think it can change definitely. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just that people such people with a voice and a platform need to change it, mm -hmm. I suppose. Um, but, uh, to your question, I don't think it's a risky one because I think it's, it's being welcomed by a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Um, a, po a lot of people, you know, see themselves and, and it, the message resonates with, with the people. So, um, you know, I think it can definitely change. I don't know mm -hmm. what, what your opinion is on that. Um, yeah, no, I agree. I think it can change. I think you're always going to have the bad apples in any, any bunch. Right. But, yeah. uh, I think overall, like the, the 80% or whatever, I think it, that can change. And I don't think it's risky. Like you said, doing the right thing right. is always, you know, in the best interest of everybody. Right, so. right. Hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I hope you enjoyed that episode. I know I had a lot of fun doing it. I just want to say a huge thank you to Arif and Michael and everybody at SCM Forex for getting me out there, hosting me, putting me up at a great hotel, and taking time out of their busy schedule to show me the beautiful city of Stockholm. If you want to find out more about Scandinavian capital markets and talk to one of the team over there, head on over to scmforex.com. And if you're ever in that part of the world, they would love for you to stop by and visit their offices. Thank you for listening to the Trading Lifestyle Podcast. To listen to all of the other episodes and get free access to Forex trading tools, tutorials and resources, visit tradingheroes.com.